Hey, Matt Allen here. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about something a little bit different than what we've been talking about in the past. Obviously my last 20, 30, 40 videos have been focused on catching big fish and today is no different. Obviously that's what I'm passionate about, it's what I like to do, but we're going to talk about a very, very different approach. I woke up this morning, it's raining outside. Here in Northern California, our reservoirs are still pretty clear. They haven't muddied up yet, but the water is getting really cold really fast. We're getting a lot of rain, a lot of snow. So you gotta change it up on them. Now, uh, what I wanna talk to you about today is something that we took from back east. Uh, this isn't something we developed out here by any means. I wanna talk to you guys about the float and fly. For those of you in the Midwest, especially the smallmouth guys, they're all going, okay, I know what you're talking about. But um, this is something that isn't just for smallmouth. I've been doing it out here for a couple of years, a few years actually, I guess it's been four or five years now, catching uh, smallmouth, spotted bass, and largemouth. And you can catch big fish on the float and fly. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to set that rig up. Um, I don't take too different of an approach from everybody else, but I tweak it a little bit in my own way. So. First thing, the rod. Um, I'm using, it's a, a Reddington rod, and the reason is just that the rod companies I really like, the brands I really like, don't make a float and fly rod. This actually is not a float and fly rod. It's a ultra light steel head rod, go figure. But it's so ultra light that it works great for what we're doing. And then I couple that with a Shimano Sustain 2500. The reason I go with such a big reel with such light line is just to get that bigger spool size, that bigger arbor. Um, I just like that better. And then I spool it up with either 2 pound or 4 pound line. Um, I know that's a little bit different than the 25 and 30 pound that I preach for swim bait fishing, but for this technique it really does matter. I love to fish 2 pound. It's why I'm using a 9.5 foot rod so that I'm still able to put a little leverage on those fish and get them in the boat. So as far as how this technique works, first thing you do is you get generic bobber stops. Uh, these are like Eagle Claw brand. I mean they're just totally generic. Uh, put one on the line, slide it way, way up the line. My, my personal experience is that I like to keep my bait, assuming I'm not fishing for suspended fish. Most of the time I'm fishing for fish that are on the bottom. So what I'll do is I like to keep my bait about two feet off of the bottom. That's what I prefer. So I'll look at my depth finder, I adjust accordingly, and I slide that bobber stop up, you know, 12 feet or 18 feet or whatever it happens to be. And then I slide on my bobber. I use a sliding bobber, and this is a, a Thill brand bobber, T-H-I-L-L, -L, and I really believe that this matters. Um, I haven't seen anybody else using these bobbers, and I'm telling you this is the best one that I can find. Now most of the time on my site, you're not going to hear me talk about brands. Um, I'm not here to push product, it's why you don't see a big list of sponsors on the side of the page. I'm here to help people catch more fish. If you hear me talk about a brand, it's because I absolutely believe in it because I think it will make a difference in your fishing. This bobber, for what I do, matters. Um, any bobber will get jerked underwater when a fish eats it. No problem, you know you got a bite. But when a fish just barely comes up, and this happens with the float and fly a lot, you're sitting there, this bobber, the reason it's so important is when I match my jig to it, the water level sits halfway up that bobber perfectly. It's perfectly balanced to the jig. So any movement on that jig, whether a fish just comes up and just barely touches it and doesn't even pull it down, just picks it up, that bobber will go on the surface, rolls over. So even if a fish isn't eating my bait and running off, I instantly know that I've been bit because it's perfectly balanced. So important. Then I run my line down, and again, this is a slip. So it's going to float all the way up to that bobber stop and then stop. And then my jig. Uh, to be honest, I don't even remember what brand jig this is. It's craft hair. That's very, very important. Craft hair moves differently than everything else. There's a lot of hair jigs on the market. I'm not so tied into one brand of those. There's a few different ones I use. Uh, but this is a, I think it's a 132nd. It might even be a 116th. But a very, very light jig. Um, as far as color goes, I like a little bit of chartreuse. A uh, little bit of white, but I'm not too particular. I use some browns and things like that as well. Uh, but it's important that it's craft hair. If you're going to pick one, pick one that doesn't have too much material. I mean, the thinner the skirt, the better, because that's when it really pulsates and flows in the water. So 
that's the rig as far as actually fishing it. We'll probably do some on the water video soon, but you really don't want to overwork a float and fly. Um, your best conditions are overcast is great, but just a little bit of chop on the water where you throw that thing out there and you really don't have to move it at all. It just kind of rides on the waves and down below that skirt's just pulsating. But if it is a calm day, I just barely move it at all. Just a couple inches at a time and then let it sit. A couple inches at a time. But it is deadly effective on big fish on the east coast, up north, out west. And you Texas guys better sit down and take a, a good look at this video. Is uh, you know the same guys that said a swim bait won't work in Texas, and now they know it does. A float and fly will too. It'll catch your big fish. So take a look at it, enjoy the video, and uh, we'll try to get some on the water footage for you soon. Have a good day.